So, what is your favorite holiday dish? And we're not talking about food. Welcome to No Two Gays About It, the show for the over 50 gay male, all about things that are important to those of us over 50 and gay, and hosted by two over 50 gay men. Hi, I'm Tom Burke. Hi, and I'm Michael Foley. And it is a holiday weekend, and Michael and I are feeling a little, well, holiday-ish. So what better thing to do than sit around and dish? We are going to talk about holidays, stories, past, present, and future. Maybe throw a little shade, spill a little tea. No We shall kidding. see. Oh, look, that awesome. rhymed. <laughs> Ah, oh, you're so clever. So, um, all right. So let's get into this, shall we? Let's. Okay. So, as I said, this is a holiday weekend. Thanksgiving has just passed. And one of my family traditions, led by my mother, was that after every holiday event or party, whether it be with our extended family or friends, we would then sit around and talk about people. <laughs> You know, like uh, who wore what, why were they wearing that, who got drunk, what secrets were exposed, what was the worst food that they served, et cetera, et cetera. And I used to think that that was a normal thing that families did. So, so was this talking about specifically other family members or were there friends involved and they were the oh, targets? Everybody that wasn't my mother. Everybody yes. was fair game. Okay. All right. Everybody. All right. And as I said, I used to think that that was a normal thing to do, but- <laughs> Apparently, I've realized that it's not, um, although I still love to do it, um, you know, in my own way, not not in my mother's way. Um, but, you know, before we get into that, this this is why this all brought this up for me. I read an article right before Thanksgiving that uh, there was a man up in Michigan, and he had decided that he was not going to invite his grown children to Thanksgiving because they voted for Trump. Hmm. And then I read, um, there's a Fox News, and I'm putting fake quotes around the word news, host um, Jesse Waters, whose mother did not invite him to Thanksgiving because of his all hail, I'm kissing Donald Trump's ass. I, you know what? I can't, I can't say I'm angry about that. I totally get it. Um, especially who, who? if they wear it on their sleeve. You know, if somebody showed up at my door with a MAGA hat on, um, I don't think I would want them in my house. Well, yeah, that's the thing. And uh, I, that's making me think like I am sure all over the United States, this is going to play a big part, not only in this past holiday, but in all of, you know, future holidays that are coming up. I I would not want any Trumper at anything that I'm at, I, or, I would not or, feel comfortable. Or just, so that group that I get together with in LA um, every holiday, an email was sent out to everybody to please make it a non-political zone. Right. Just to, just to maintain, you know, the safety and security that we all have and everybody could have fun. And it's not like there are any, everybody's pretty much on the same side, but just to take that out of the conversation for a day, especially right now, and just enjoy each other's company and just have fun and forget everything else that's going on in the world, I think is a really good way to start that day. Well, I, I totally agree with that. But I, I mean, first of all, how horrible that we have to send out emails like yeah. that, you know, for our safety. What? Really? But then even if I was at an event, like no one at my holiday this season was, you know, Trumpers or voted for Trump. But even if I was sitting next to like old uncle, whoever, who I know voted for Trump, I don't think I could be in the same room with them. Just like, seriously, you know, we have it's going simply, against everything that we believe. It's a shame. It really is such a shame that um, yeah. we have become that divided where even if there is a political difference, now this, this goes to just so much more than politics and you know, somebody's stance on a particular issue. This is, I think it goes deeper than that. It's, it's morality. It's you know? a total morality thing. Um, but a lot of people, and again, it's just, it's, it's just sad that we've been brought to this place, um, right. especially on a day where it should be about just rejoicing and sharing each other's company. But it is what it is, and we have to figure out how to make the best of it. 
Yeah, exactly. So I, I feel that this is going to be a lot of talk after all holiday parties this year of like, oh my God, did you see who was there? Did you, did you know that he voted for Trump or did you know she was a Trumper or whatever? A lot of dish will be served about <laughs> politics for sure. Yeah. But politics aside, do you have any old horror holiday stories to share with us? Everyone prior to the age of 18. Wow. Because um, it's funny, I'm from a Sicilian Italian family. So how your family waited till the next day or the weekend to talk about people, my family did it the day of. So there was, there was always drama going on, right. you know, um, which was on some level kind of fun, but then it crossed the, you know, like my mother, There, I don't think there was a holiday where she didn't get drunk and just become a miserable, she was a miserable human being anyway, but just mm -hmm. more miserable because she didn't get to spend the day with the guy she was having an affair with because he was home with his family. So, you know, that sent her around the bend. In, wow, in a bigger way than any other normal day. So, um, yeah, it was it was always kind of yucky, um, and that's why I said, you know, it was nice when I was older to experience what a holiday was actually supposed to be like. So, yeah. um, you know, but it is what it is, and we learn what we learn from those experiences, right? Yeah, totally. Oh, um, but as we all know, holidays just bring up so much stuff, you know with your mom not being able to be with her boyfriend or whoever, you know, it wasn't even her boyfriend. It was somebody else's husband, you know? <laughs> so so basically, a whole other layer there. <laughs> so basically you lived in a lifetime movie or something, right? Oh, it, it, it wasn't so the, popular. it wasn't the PG lifetime kind of movie. It was more I like see. Cinemax or HBO back in the day. You know, well, that's awesome. Oh, it really was just a joy. Um, how about you? Like what, what, what drama happened the day of the holiday that you remember and sort of look back and cringe at? I, it just seemed like there was always something, right? Uh, you know, our, our family was complete opposite. We are that, you know, like pole stuck up your ass, nobody say anything, <laughs> but just look and give those looks to people, yeah. you know? It was just also like we always had to be on beha our behavior watch and we had to be dressed properly. And it was just all too much for me. Um, but I do, you know, know that men our age, especially after going through the uh, AIDS crisis, but then also as we all have been watching our, our families disappear, our, our, you know, we're losing our parents and, and now we're losing more friends that holidays the firsts, the first one after someone has gone is always so difficult yeah. and it brings up so much more stuff. And uh, so I know that a lot of people this season, just as in every year, are, are experiencing those firsts. And that's always such a really hard, hard thing to go through. Without a doubt. I, I, the, I remember the first holiday after, you know, he, he was a brother to me. Um, and a number of other people in my social group. And um, that first Thanksgiving after he passed, because that was his favorite holiday as well, yeah, was tough. But I, I, feel, I feel like all of us felt like we owed it to him and that he was there with us to enjoy the day that was so special for him. That's awesome. So I, I think it depends on how you come at it. Yes, we were still so grief stricken and devastated, but... It was almost like we took that day to put that aside and have Norm sitting with us. Right. Yeah. You know? I know a lot of families do, you know, like they're going to serve, speaking of dish, they're going to serve like grandma's what bean, green bean casserole or Ooh. mom's favorite, whatever, that to keep those people alive at holidays. I think that's a lovely thing to do as well. Yeah. But, you know, uh, green bean casserole, I don't know. <laughs> And Joe, you know I love you dearly, but I, it may be time to retire it because <laughs> our friend Joe always has to have the green bean casserole. It's a, right. it is his tradition, and also canned cranberry sauce. Okay, I know where I came from, but I still love that cranberry stuff in the can. You pour it out; it yep. still looks it like the can. The <laughs> yeah, it's just awesome. I mean, I would much rather have that than that fancy stuff. I grew up like, you know, for our 
say whatever holiday, Thanksgiving dinner, hors d'oeuvres would be served or passed around and it would be like crab claws. And, you know, like, I'm like, I just want mashed potato. I want to be normal, you know? Um, so I love the normal kind of thing. Yeah. Cranberry and cans and whatever. Um, yeah. Thanksgiving, my favorite holiday as well, just as your friend Norm's, because it's, there's no pressure. Yeah. You know, you don't have all those gifts that you have to buy. You don't have to, you know, meet somebody's expectations. It's just all about getting together and basically eating. Yep. So food, unless you're food and fun, cooking, right? food and fun, those two yeah. things, it's uh, it's it's such a unique day in in that regard because there is other than just eating and enjoying, there's no other expectation on the day, which is really unusual. So. We talked a little bit about the horrors of holidays. What about, do you have any like really fun, happy holiday memories? Oh my God, I, I have a massive amount of them. Um, my first one, I was uh, 19 and it was the first Thanksgiving I would be spending away from my family, which created all of this drama. My mother was having her usual fits and what's Aunt Ann going to say? What's this one going to say? I was like, yeah. I don't give a shit. and. It it was the first time I volunteered at the Gay Men's Health Crisis and made dinner for a group of people um, who didn't have anywhere else to go. And it was one of the most glorious days of my life. Yeah. Yeah. So that's probably one of my fondest memories. Awesome. And one more that I have to share. I have to bring up Joe again, because it was the first time we were having Thanksgiving at his house. Mm -hmm. And he asked what he should get. And I was very specific. Um, it's like his green bean casserole, right? It has to be what it is. I said green giant corn in a can, not frozen, in a can. And it had to be green giant because it's really good. Um, right. I get to his house and I'm like, so where's the corn? And he pulls out a box of Ralph's frozen corn. And I was like, um, you had one job. <laughs> <laughs> And he was like, oh, my God, do you, oh, do you want me to go to Ralph's and get, like, the Green Giant? And I was like, uh-huh. And he did. Wow. And it was just one of those moments where I, I, I'll never forget that um, because I I need my I need my Green Giant corn on Thanksgiving. It's what I look forward to the most with my mashed so, potatoes and my gravy. What's, tell what, me, what's the one what, dish that you need that, like, makes your Thanksgiving your Thanksgiving? It's still totally mashed potatoes. But okay. before I talk about that, I, I have to find out, though, what's the big deal? What's the difference in the corn? I don't okay, get first it. First of all, frozen corn just is mushy and tasteless. Okay. I don't know. You know, Green Giant, whatever they do, the whole kernel, and if you could get the white, it's even better, is just sweet. It, like, pops in your mouth. It's crunchy. It just is reminiscent. It's about as fresh to fresh corn as you could get without it being fresh corn. Okay, cool. And what's ironic is it's always, there's never a kernel left. Like everybody goes for the corn. Okay. So good. So I, I'm not, good. I'm not a real corn guy. Um, you know, that whole thing of like, you eat corn, it looks the exact same way going in as it does coming out. So like, what's the point? Is that, that, old, that, that old Carol Channing joke, right? Yes. You ever hear that joke? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> when did I have corn? corn. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm 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 not oh real big God. on corn, so I don't get it. But more power to you. And yeah. Right. So for me, it is totally the mashed potatoes. Okay. I I could live on mashed potatoes. I love them so much. It's my Irish heritage. I would imagine. Um, with, yeah. I just with, love with it. or without gravy. No gravy. Oh no. my God! Really. Gravy oh. never comes near me. No. Oh, no. Lord. No. Mm. Okay. All right. See, and there you go. To each his own, right? Exactly, right? We all, we all have our it's things. One thing that makes you happy that you, gotta, you just got to go for. Indeed. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, one of, um, you were saying your first holiday away from family, one of your uh, happier ones. One of my first holidays away from my family um, I was in New York City and my um, bestie, Jamie, was having going to have dinner at her place. I know I shared this story over at Patreon because we do a lot of um, bonus material over there at Patreon where you get to learn more about Michael and myself. Um, but it was such a great story. I will never, ever forget it. 
We were in her tiny, tiny little kitchen, and there were a bunch of people out there waiting for dinner, and we were getting the turkey out of the oven. Tiny little oven, you know, those apartment ovens that are, I don't know, a foot and a half wide or something. We're like pulling this turkey out, and it just flew and fell on the floor, and we fell on the floor, and we're just hysterically laughing. It was just it was so opposite of my family and holidays. And it was just so freeing. Like you were saying, you were free yeah. with this new family. And her boyfriend at the time was this accountant or somebody so totally straight laced. And he like looks in the, he's like, Whoa. you know, we were just laughing like, Oh, fuck off. You know, we're all, you know, we ate the Turkey. It was so much fun though. That, that freedom of finally I'm, I'm my own person kind of feeling. Yeah, no. it really is an amazing thing when you experience it for the first yeah. time that, you know, it's like, oh, this is what happy feels like because yeah, you're, right. you can be completely who you are, right? And for some reason, a lot of us guys, especially our age, never felt that around our biological family, that we yeah, really did have to wait until we were older to find that I'm accepted moment right. with a group of people who it was just like, we're just glad you're here, you know? <laughs> right. You know, um, I did get to experience myself with my family. This is, I'm going to share too much, I'm sure. But I have a cousin, Joyce, who's my same age, and we did everything together. Uh, we went to school together. She went to the girls' high school. I went to the boys' high school. We belonged to the same country club. So we were, every summer we're together. Every Christmas, she and I would put on a show <laughs> where we would put on costumes and we would perform for, I can only imagine now, my parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles just like, oh, what the fuck is wrong with this little fagala? You know, like me putting on my costumes and like, I'm going to perform, like singing and dancing as Joseph and Mary in front of the Christmas tree or whatever. Um, what was the yeah. song of choice for Joseph and Mary, just out of curiosity? I have, I have no idea. Like I a just, virgin? Who, who knows what it was? It was <laughs> <laughs> or no, that's actually, we're way, we're way too old for it to have been like a virgin. <laughs> so never mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah way, way, way too, too old. old. Yeah. But I did get to, you know, until I'm sure at some point my mother said like, no, that's not as acceptable or something made Aww. me feel horrible about myself. And then I retreated and the show stopped. But that was a, some joy during the holidays, I would imagine. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. yeah. You know, nice you know. even if there was that little, you know, oasis in the middle of the desert that you got to experience occasionally with your family, that's a nice thing. Right. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Uh, but there, but still, as I said, after every party, we still had to sit around and dish about everyone and say, you know, these snide kind of things about everybody. And <laughs> It's like wow, I yeah, it sets a, it sets a tone for you know right. a big portion of your life to come, and you know hopefully we grow out of that stuff and realize that that wasn't the importance of that particular day, and we're able to focus on just the joy and you know yeah. so what somebody was wearing an ugly Christmas sweater for Thanksgiving, you know to uh, me that's fun. Oh, I'm still going to call them out if it's an ugly sweater. <laughs> Uh, no, I said ugly Christmas sweater. Now there's a difference. Ugly Christmas sweaters are meant to be ugly. The uglier, okay. the better. So, okay, good. You know, there's a, I have to say, I have worn my very Barry Christmas on Thanksgiving. And that's one of my favorite ugly sweaters. And it's not time to retire that? Ever. No. <laughs> oh my God. No, it'll be on this year. I'm going to wait till okay. Christmas though. Cool. Yeah. All right. So, because of this climate that we're in politically and also just our whole community, especially the over 50 gays are a little worried about what's going to happen. Um, you know, we, we, you and I are in this fabulous blue bubble over here in California in Palm Springs, but there are a lot of people who are not, right. who are living in red states, who are really kind of worried about what's about to happen are, you know, men older than we are who are worried about their social security be t being taken away. And, you know, it, it's putting a whole lot of not only pressure, but we're still all reeling from the, uh, the election. So this sadness and despair feelings and on this holiday season. So 
what can we do? What do we need to help each other through this period. So what's something that we can do to get through this holiday season? And it, it is obviously not as easy as it sounds, but we do let, on Thanksgiving, get up that morning and just let everything else sit in another room, you know, all that negativity and just focus on the happiness of that day. If you're able to, um, Start your day with your favorite movie or TV show um, just to get you in that mood that whatever it is that brings you to your happy place, what your favorite album, your favorite type of music, whatever it is, just to get you in a space of gratitude, because that's what Thanksgiving is supposed to be about. Yeah, you know? but, but we're talking about the entire season of holidays. I mean, that's a oh, month plus long. Right. And, you know, I... I mentioned a day because if you're in any type of program or have ever experienced a program, that's how you handle the moment. You don't think about tomorrow. You, you know, on Thanksgiving, you shouldn't be thinking about Christmas. Just be in, be in that moment and whatever it takes to get you into that happy place. Like I said, if it's music, if it's a TV show, if it's a movie, put it on. Let it take you to that happy place and just worry about the moment. Because right. Christmas is going to take care of itself no matter how much you stress about it. So it is going to be, it's a long run, you know, and if you've ever run a marathon, you know, you're not thinking about mile 24 at mile two. You're focusing on mile two and getting to mile three. And then when you're on mile three, you get to mile four, right? It's just right. how it goes. Or me being a tennis player, I don't, if it's the second game of the set, I'm not thinking about the sixth game of the set because they, I'm guaranteed to lose the set. So whatever you can do to keep you in the moment and to keep you in that happy place that works for you, I strongly suggest that giving it a try at least. Um, okay. How about you? What's, what's, do you have a secret for getting you through? Right. Uh, well, there's a lot. I, I, I rely on a lot. And one thing, as you said, you know, if you're running the marathon, you're thinking of mile two, not mile 26 or whatever. I'm thinking about the cupcakes I'm going to be eating later. So that is something to have something beyond, you know, something that you can look forward to that is going to bring you joy right. uh, as if to get through this holiday season or whatever. But I think the, the biggest thing that we have to do now, especially with all of this added political pressure and unhappiness, we have to make our own health and happiness and sanity a priority. We don't usually do that around the holidays. You know, we're always so busy thinking about other people and worrying about other people. And I think we do need to really stop for a second and say, is this serving me? How can I, you know, do something better for me? Like, as you know, we are here in Palm Springs. We have entered the season. Our season goes from November till April where every freaking night is like another charity event or dinner or some sort of party. And then the holidays kick in and it just is one night after the next night after the next night. And I used to be the guy who'd be like, sure, yes, we'll show up. Well, you know, we'll be there, whatever. And I've decided this year, there's going to have to be a lot of no's. I need to really concentrate on myself and my husband and our sanity. Right. And, you know, it's a lot of added pressure that we don't really need to be putting on. So I think, you know, that's one thing that that we're going to do. And I suggest to other people, make sure that you're putting yourself first. Right. Yeah. Don't overextend. I mean, yeah, totally. you know what? I, and it doesn't even have to be a no. It could be a maybe. Let me see where I am. Let me see what else is going on. So, you know, if you get an invitation to a party and you're not 100% sure, maybe is a really acceptable answer. Right. Well, not if, not if well, you're I mean, like, a, if it's an open house, obviously yeah, 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 a sit down dinner, you can't give a maybe, right? But yeah. Consider the circumstance. Yeah. And again, maybe is an acceptable answer. Totally. Yeah. I also, you know, for everybody who's listened to any one of our shows, you know, that I am big on making lists and being totally organized. And I find that that helps me get through too, you know, even with, Christmas coming up and you have to buy all these gifts. And I, you know, I make sure I make my list of who do I have to get and what am I getting and what am I spending and what, you know, I also have my chart of like, what parties are we going to and 
what are we wearing to these parties? <laughs> because wow, you go deep. Whoa, well, seriously, dude. Especially <laughs> here in this town, you go into an event every night, and every night there's like a third of the people you saw the night before, and a third of the people you're going to see two nights from now. You can't be showing up in the same outfits all the time. So you know, I do have to kind of. But that help. That's for me. That helps. My husband thinks I'm nuts. He thinks it's crazy. But that's what helps me get through. So right. I mean, that's okay. We have to find what helps us. Each but of us. Does it, does that add a layer of stress as God well? No. Or, do, or you, you? So you take comfort in that planning. Total comfort in the planning. Nice. Total comfort in my list because I can look at it. I can. It, it I, for me, it kind of like calms me down. Like okay. This is these are the three things I need to accomplish in the next 15 minutes. Great. Okay. I can handle that. As opposed to going like, oh my God, what am I supposed to be doing? I find more that it's far less stress by being as organized as I possibly can, you know. So then because I'm that way too, but I also allow for something's probably gonna come up that's gonna throw me off. Right. Oh yeah. Totally. So how do you how do you handle those moments where you know you completely get hitting the head with a ball from left field. Um, what do you do? Yeah. Does that stress you out when all of a sudden you're thrown off of your plan? No, it's kind of like, whoa, okay, add it to the list. And then you, you know, you just put it back on there and then you figure okay. out how to get, because if you're, for me, being so incredibly organized is that if something does come from the outside, left field, wherever, I can handle it better than if I'm running around going like, I don't know, I have so many things to do and I'm, I'm overwhelmed and whatever. Then if something hits you, you're like, oh, I can't take another thing. Right. But there are, there are a lot of folks out there who that, you know, yeah, little, sure. crimp, little crimp in their chiffon and they go bananas, right? Um, well, a crimp in my chiffon <laughs> might send me somewhere, but luckily I have my steamers uh, there you go. At all times. You got the back, you got a, it's, I guess what we're, you have to have a backup plan, right? Regardless exactly. of the list. So that, that's, that's, that's a great thing. Right. So I, the whole thing is you find what works for you through this political season right. that, of holiday that we're in. But what are we going to do? Uh, it, it just makes me feel ugh, thinking about it. What do we do if those MAGA relatives or people we know at work who did vote for Trump. Like, how do we deal? How how are you going to deal with all of this? So, you know, I am the political one, right? Um, right. How I'm going to deal with it through this season is to walk away from it. Okay. There's a, there's a time, you know, it's the old adage, choose your battle. Sure. Am I going to let somebody ruin this holiday season? Not a fucking chance. Right. Because next year, Come, you know, come January, we're going to have a lot of stuff to deal with. So I'm taking the next month, month and a half to sit back and just to live in my own bubble and not focus on anybody else on the other side of the aisle, because I'm not going to let them suck the joy out of my life. Brilliant, 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 right? Great way to deal with it. It's a great way to deal with anything in life. I I, I never want to give my power over to somebody else or right. my happiness or my health, you know? So that's a great way to look at things, I yeah. think. Definitely. Um, but it's still, it's going to be hard for people like that guy up in Michigan who didn't invite his children to Thanksgiving. I don't know how it worked out up there, but. Well, I'm, assume, I'm know, assuming he knew what was going to happen and see that's him taking care of himself saying, I'm not letting you on this day of thanks take anything away from me. Right. And there's there's great strength in a moment like that. It doesn't have to be, you could take something like that and make it into something really positive. It doesn't have to be, oh, I had to disinvite my family and, you know, get all depressed and happy. It's you taking a stand and saying, you're not going to, again, you're not going to suck the joy out of my life now. And that's the one day at a time thing. Yeah, but you know that that, that decision is not just happening one day. That's going to affect their relationships. Yeah, obviously, it's probably going to bleed into Christmas and the rest of the holiday, but yeah. um, it has to be okay right now. Sure. You know, you have to figure out what you need to do to survive any given moment. There's this great phrase, I may completely screw it up, but 
it's all you need to it, it no it's okay if all you did today was survive sometimes that has to be okay that you just did what you needed to do to get through the day and to acknowledge the fact that that's strength it's not a weakness it's strength to have just made it through another day where things are really hard right yeah and give yourself a little pat on the back for that right you know also earlier in our show today you you said that one of the first um holidays you were on your own and you went to serve somebody else you volunteered somewhere and i think that is a really really great thing for all of us to think about in this season to get out of ourselves to get out of our heads to think about somebody else to you know um i think that's something that certainly helps me um and to think what cuz why i thought of that was what you just said you know sometimes it's just making it through the day is is enough right yeah it's a, some so days it's hercule it's a herculean effort some days just to make it through sure but but you have to also think there are people who have it far worse exactly. and getting through their days is far worse you know um so another thing that i'm suggesting to people is get out of your heads get out of stop feeling sorry for yourself do something for somebody else it totally helps and changes how we feel about ourselves and being grateful for what we do have and maybe it is a really crappy time we're in but we definitely can be there for each other those people that need help you know and in those instances what's amazing what's always been amazing to me is the community that happens around events like that not yeah. with only the people who are being served but what they give back to the people who are there for them right it creates this just amazing world that yeah. exists for nothing else but that moment I cannot agree with you more and I just want to share something that this past week I I also as you most people have heard I uh, volunteer at our food bank it's the LGBTQ+ plus, the center's food bank and every week I am doing I get to to do intake I get to talk to everyone who comes in there um this past week the center gave $50 gift cards to a grocery store to everybody and it was my privilege and honor to be the person who gave those cards to everybody and the reaction that came back was so amazing that i i'm floating i it wasn't anything i did i was just mm -hmm. facilitating this but how i felt was so amazing you know i love doing it every week and helping every anybody i can but the camar camaraderie that this group of gay guys and a couple lesbians that are there with us uh pulling together to do this work but then the gratitude that we're getting from these people who are coming it just it's like this it just keeps building in this yeah. joy and happiness and whatever and you can't leave a place like that helping somebody still thinking like oh fuck trump uh, be, you know being all angry and upset you just can't yeah. you know uh it's it's a beautiful beautiful thing so again get out there and help somebody else cuz there's always somebody who's got it a little bit worse than you do you know or you and know what if you're in need, if you're in need of help if you're in need of assistance don't be afraid to reach out and ask for it because there are people out there who are willing to give unconditionally and sometimes the hardest thing for any of us to do and lord knows i know this is to ask for help sure you know yeah. to say i'm struggling i'm having a really hard time and there are people there who are willing to open their arms and say it's okay oh my god yeah, yeah, totally. But we all have to step up for each other as well. Um this was also a brilliant thing that happened the other uh maybe a week ago at the food bank. Two homeless guys who come every week and they have to walk up, they don't have a car, they don't have any transportation. They asked, "How can we help here?" Oh, that's amazing. And I was like, what? "Yeah. Excuse me for a minute while I just 
go in the back and cry for a little bit. I was like, that was so lovely, you know? Um, Cause they know, yeah, we got it bad, but some other people have it worse than we yeah. do or whatever. And, and the fact yeah. that they're actually, you know, able to say, yeah, can I help someone else is just a remarkable thing. It is so awesome. That's um, what we have to remember this holiday season is that it's not about that other, that other. Yeah. Just try to create that circle of community any way you can, any way that works for you, any way that makes you feel comfortable. I right. think that's how we survive this particular holiday season and also help to lift each other up. Totally. You know? We have to keep reminding ourselves that we're in this together, especially all of us over 50 gay men. We have been on this ride together for a very long time. And to stop doing all of that, you know, crap that my mother and sisters were doing of like dishing everybody at every event, stop putting everybody down, you know, in our community and let's lift each other up. Let's help people as much as we can to get through not only this holiday season, but everything that's coming and the next four years or whatever it's going to be. We have to be there for each other. Bingo. It's all we got is each bingo. other. That's everybody's no. free space, right? That, yep. that, that's the given on your bingo card. Create that well, community. Like, help each other. Extend a hand. Play. And be willing to receive a hand. There you go. Both. You and be know, okay. Be okay with, you know, accepting help. Yeah. Because that's again, a hard one. It's a hard one for our generation to say, I, I need help. It, it, we weren't raised that way. We weren't taught that. Right. But just as with those two young homeless guys, they needed help. But then they also, in getting help, they realize that they can also give help. Right. And so I think that's the thing. If you see, like, I'm giving help to somebody, it's okay to ask. It's okay if I need help in another place or another direction or whatever. Just, just let's all be there for each other through this whole holiday season and you can wear whatever sweater you want and do whatever you want. Just be kind to each other. There you go. Yeah. And let's be real. Anytime you're reading somebody else, it's it's coming from a place of insecurity within your own self. So take that look inside and see what that is. What's that about? You know? Okay. Yep. All right. So fantastic. Let's continue this whole feeling of forward movement and upward movement throughout this next holiday season of uh, all you guys out there. Let us know how you are going to make it through this season or, or your little tips and tricks for making it the happiest holiday season ever, because we all can help each other out. Um, how can they let us know their ways of dealing with this holiday? Um, you guys, first of all, if you're watching us on YouTube, Click like and subscribe and ring that little bell if you want to get a new video at the moment it drops. You could also reach us across social media because anywhere you are, we are, except for X. Um, or if you want to reach out to us in a more personal way, um, you could hit us up at no2gaysaboutit at gmail.com. And that goes across our social media as well, no2gaysaboutit. And just remember, it's the number two. Right. Yeah. Awesome. We want to hear from you guys. We love reading all of your comments. We try to you know, comment if we can, otherwise we're liking everything. Know that we are reading every one of your comments um, and we really appreciate it. And more than that, we love when you comment to each other. And also you could actually hit us up at Patreon. Uh, you can find us at no two gays about it at Patreon forward slash, wait, sorry, no two gays about it forward slash patreon.com. I think I got yeah. that right. <laughs> <laughs> but just go to Patreon and search No Two Gays About It. Um, and you can join our community there. There are multiple levels for you to check out and find what works best for you and uh, subscribe there. And we do want to send a shout out and a very special thank you to um, a few of our guys who subscribe at the executive producer role. And that is Lauren Javier, John Bonasante, Ted Zalewski, Jason Cruz, and Kurt Bremer. Thank you guys for your support and your encouragement. And thank you, everybody who actually is on Patreon and supporting us, it means the world to uh, both Tom and I. Everyone out there, whether you're on Patreon, YouTube, listening to us wherever, we so appreciate you guys. You 
you will never know how much. It, it's so great. So for all of you out there watching or listening, have the absolute best, most positive, happiest, healthiest, sanest, most filled with gratitude and acceptance holiday season ever from yes, then like keep that. eating those leftovers and then make some turkey soup with that carcass because that's the best part for me and what's the kind of corn we're supposed to be eating green if you can't get fresh green giant whole kernel white preferably but the the yellow is just as good um in the can do not do frozen corn don't do it all right, we'll try not to. All Stay right, away thanks from the light. Thanks for dishing with Carolina. us today. And until next time, Michael. <laughs> until next time. Thank you, Tom. And thank you guys for listening. Thank you.